Hi everyone, my name is Nithya and you're at my floss tube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. This is a channel all about cross stitch and one crochet item today. Uh, it's December 2023, the end of December 2023. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and uh, I've just, I'm coming on to say what I've been working on this month. So uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Nice to have you here, and if you're coming back, returning, uh, welcome back. It's nice to check in with you. These monthly check-ins are something I really look forward to. So, um, I think I'm just going to get right into it. I, I have pages and pages of notes on what to show you today. I didn't end up, you know, in my last video I was talking about maybe doing a whip parade. I didn't quite get that together, but this might as well be one. I pulled out a lot of old projects and we'll be talking about plans and then tons. I touched on a bunch of whips this month, so we'll have lots of good stitching to talk about. So uh, I'm going to have a quick sip of my coffee and then we're going to get going. I hope everyone's doing okay. December has felt like a really long month, but uh, I'm on break right now, which is nice. Uh, good time to decompress, spend some actual time thinking about plans for 2024, life plans and also stitchy plans, and uh, getting a lot of stitching time, which I'm loving. Okay, so uh, let me show you some finishes. So the first one is by Shaded Stitchery, and it's called Relax, Relate, Release, <laughs> and it's a quote from uh, the TV show A Different World, and uh, it's a great scene uh, where one of the characters, Whitley Gilbert, is talking to a therapist who's getting increasingly frustrated with her. <laughs> and this is the advice that she gives her. But uh, so this is on an 18 count Ada. It's, I'm not sure what color it is. It's definitely Picture This Plus. And it was from a whole set of Ada that I got from Alicia Resist Stitch who is getting rid of some of her Picture This Plus Ada on um, like 16 count and smaller counts. And so um, I don't have the names of all those fabrics, but it kind of looks like sprites to me. It's like a very pale purple, a very pale kind of grayish purple um, with light modeling on it. So, And then I used a DMC 340 is this really pretty like bluish purple. And then this is 356, this coral pink. And uh, this was a really fun, great stitch. And uh, I want to thank Nuri for all, all of her wonderful patterns. Hope to stitch a lot more. I have two other whips from Nuri. Um, maybe three. I have three, I think, other whips from Nuri. So definitely want to stitch on more of those uh, in 2024. This I started re-watching the, the series. Um, not this month, but last month. And it just... It's a show that really warms my heart. It's all about love and community, and it's so funny. It takes place on a college campus. Do you know a different world? It takes place on a college campus um, at a like a, a fictional HB um, CU, uh, historically black college or university, and um, I just love the met the like the first episode I watched. So I usually skip season one, which is. We're getting into so quick TV talk here, okay? Season one is with Lisa Bonet and Marissa Tomei, and it's really good. Season one is really great, but it has like a different feel to it than all the rest of the seasons. And season two, a whole bunch of new characters join in, and that's like those are the long the long term characters that stay on for the rest of the show. And um, yeah, it's just they, there's such a great sense there that uh, it's the stu college students, but also their professors and. Uh, it's a whole community of people kind of looking out for each other, and I, I just love that. <laughs> it felt so nice to watch it again. So thanks, Nuri, for bringing this into back into my life. That's been a good, um, like a feel-good kind of show to get back into. Okay, next up, I have three finishes on um, Stitches for Palestine. So the first one... Actually, the first two are together, so I'll show them to you together. It's this one right here. This is Palestinian Flag by Hib Stitches on Instagram. I'll link them below along with everything else. 
uh, that I mentioned today. And then this one here is Cypress Pendant by Tira Zane Initiative. And both of those are small patterns. This one's a freebie. Um, this one you donate, if you message Hib Stitches on Instagram and donate, um, if you donate to Palestinian Children's Relief Front Fund, PCRF, and then you send confirmation of your donation to Hib Stitches, they'll send you this pattern. And uh, this has the motifs that are on the kefia, which is the scarf that you'll see Palestinians wearing, or like people in solidarity with Palestinians also wear it. Um, and so the motifs represent land and sea, which are both really important to Palestinian heritage. So uh, let me see if I remember. So the land connection is the olive leaves and olives. And then uh, this is the, um, it's supposed to be like a fishnet, I think which represents a connection to the sea. And this part in here on the pattern, it was stitched in gray, but I went ahead, I wanted to keep, so this, I put it on a piece where I'm stitching a whole bunch of patterns by Palestinian designers, and I'm using certain colors for them. So I didn't want to stray from those colors. So I just used the DMC 310 and did the outline of all those gray stitches in there. So that's how I handled that one. And then uh, the rest of these patterns up here is Palestinian Patterns. It's by Deco Elian, and it's from one of the cross-stitch... It's the cross-stitching... No, what is it? World of Cross-Stitching magazine. It's the January 2023 issue, which is one of the best issues ever. Um, it's going to come back later again because I'm sk stitching Sky Dragon, which is on the cover of that issue. And that's, in, you know, that's one of many great patterns in that issue. The Palestinian Patterns uh, by Deco Elian. And then what am I doing? Oh, over here, I've barely started it. But over here is going to be, it's the top corner of a pattern that will fill in this space, which is... Um, a wall hanging pattern by Lena's Thobe. So I'm just filling those in. And then if there are any gaps, like this, all this here is the Palestinian patterns pattern by Deco Elian. But all of this here, I'm sort of mashing a whole bunch of different patterns together. So if there are any gaps, like here, I think there's going to be a gap. I'll um, see if there are any patterns from Tira Zane Initiative, or I'll just take one of these other motifs and repeat it to fill in the spaces. So this one uh, is kind of a, a solidarity piece, but also a, a, like an, a try to make it an activism piece too. So whenever I pick it up to stitch on it, I um, donate. My go-to for donations is the PCRF. Um, and you might find other organizations you want to donate to also. This next pattern actually is a also a Palestine pattern, and this one um, you donate to Doctors Without Borders, so that's another worthy cause, too. Um, working really hard to help out the utter chaos and disaster and nightmare that's going on in Palestine right now. I, I don't know about you all, I hope you all are still, for people who have been, and even if you haven't been, like, still writing, still calling, still sharing, still amplifying, like, it's, it's, the third month, the end of the third month of this nightmare there. And I think um, it's easy to get discouraged, like, not, or even just forget that you're supposed to stay involved. I know I did. Last week I was um, giving final exams to my students. So it was like the chaos of ending the semester. And I looked up and it was, it had been three days since I had contacted my legislators, something that I'd been doing every day. So I'm back on it now. So, you know, if you have a momentary lapse or if you feel discouraged, like I, it's just, it's what I tell my students to change is slow. We might not see the impact of things right away, but we got, we have to keep adding our little drop into the bucket, you know? Um, so this one also was a charity pattern for Palestine. And this one's by Crafty M's, Miriam who's Crafty Yams on uh, Instagram and Flosstube. They've got a great Flosstube, which I really enjoy watching. And uh, so there's an initiative. I don't know all the details about it. Maria, this Miriam or Miriam from Marumi Crafts or Yaz, uh, Made with Love, Yasmin. The three of them I know are part of this initiative called Stitchers for Peace. And I, there are probably more. I just don't know who they are. Um, but this was a pattern kind of coming out of that effort to for designers to want to do some fundraising stitching for Palestine. So I know Yaz has a pattern and uh, Miriam has a pattern. 
And uh, this is a real quick stitch. It's on, I think this is Driftwood by Color and Cotton. It's a very pale gray, and it's charted in just two colors, uh, black and red. So it's DMC 310, and I picked a, DMC, a red DMC from Stash. Looks like it might be like 777 maybe. Um, so this is a great pattern too, and uh, this you can message Miriam if you donate to Doctors Without Borders and then send confirmation of your donation. Um, she'll send you this pattern. So they've been, they've um, both Miriams have been sharing a lot of really great resources in their stories on Instagram, and I've been sharing stuff too. I don't know how much visibility things like that are getting because Instagram's changing you know, what they're showing people and micromanaging who's being shown and what voices are being shown. Um, but I think all of us feel the same, that we're just going to keep trying to share voices. Miriam, this Miriam, Crafty M's Miriam, actually wrote a really beautiful poem this morning and posted, I should have brought it. Uh, but anyway, you can check out their Instagram page and they just wrote a really beautiful poem, kind of a tribute to what's going on right now. So really appreciate it. I said it last month and I'll say it again. It's really great to be part of a community where people do feel like they can use their voice to speak up when something so uncomfortable is happening. Like we're stitching, but we're also trying to do things too, which I think is really important. And I hope we can all keep doing that. Okay. Uh, those are my finishes for the month. That takes me to, I didn't write it down. I think I've had 25 or 26 finishes this year. Most of them are small patterns, but that's okay. Um, hopefully gonna finish some larger patterns next year too. I feel like I made progress on a whole bunch of like medium-sized patterns, so I feel like I'm in good shape to maybe have some larger finishes next year. So we'll see how that works out. Okay, let me just, um, I have whips to talk about. Let me just sort out a couple things and I'll be right back. Okay, uh, we're going to talk whips. I have two things to share real quick related to uh, Palestinian stitching. So first thing is, um, I mentioned Yaz, Made with Love. Um, she created a really beautiful, it's like the map of Palestine, the outline of the map of Palestine, and then a dove and some olive, like an olive branch maybe. <laughs> it's a really pretty pattern. You can see people are finishing that pattern. It looks really amazing. And there are two people who I saw recently, who I think, if you want to see what that pattern looks like finished, they'd be really good people to, to check out. Also, one of them has a floss tube, which is really good. Um, but one is Danielle, who is gently smiling... Jaws. Gently smiling jaws on floss tube. And they just did a beautiful finish. They have a really cool, like, um, where they record, where she records her um, videos... She's got a really cool display of all of her stitching that I, I'm always, like, staring at, wondering, wondering what's back there. I'll have to catch up on her older videos and see if she gives, like, a little tour of those um, pieces. But anyway, she stitched on Yaz's pattern for peace. It's really pretty. And then Ellis. Um, Ellis Altyayanica, who is on Instagram. I don't think Ellis has a floss tube. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, Ellis. Um, but Ellis also did a really beautiful... Uh, version of that of yes a stitched pattern and um i have a book recommendation too i think a lot of people are reading this it's the hundred year hundred years war on palestine i'm listening to it on um like through hoopla which is audiobook like the audiobook app through my library and it is fascinating it's very dense history so i find that sometimes i have to like back up and re-listen to parts of it uh but the long and the short of it is that it's about, it's like the history of um, the conflict that's happening right now. So it's the hundred years that they're talking about is 1917 to 2017. And it's retelling that history through documents. So the author shares a whole bunch of like letters between politicians, um, official like political document, government documents and political documents. And so much of it reminds me of, um, like, reading Indigenous history here in the, in the Americas, like, the, the history of Native Americans. And because it's the same thing. It's, like, history 
the documents don't lie. <laughs> they tell you exactly what is being done to Indigenous peoples, both in what they say and what they don't say. You know, what's chosen to be written about and what's left out. So I can't recommend it enough. And I would say if you start it and it feels very, like, historically dense, like, with a lot of information, just back up and listen to parts of it again. And, um... My only thing I would do next, I'm going to put it on hold at the library, in a, like a print copy as well, because there are part there are quotes. Sometimes he, the author will say something or like read a quote from a document where I think, oh my gosh, I want to remember that. And then, but it's like playing, the audio version is playing and it's not easy to find that quote again or like write it down. So anyway, um, the hundred years, what is it? The hundred years war on Palestine, 1917 to 2017. And, um, Somebody, I think it's Sim Kern on Instagram, has done in their reels, um, I think they do book talks on the different chat. I haven't listened to them yet, but I feel like I remember them saying that they were going to save in their reels, like book talks of the chapters on that book. So that's something more to check out too. Okay, whips. Um, that's I should finish this this month. I don't know. I got so distracted with other things. So this is by Kin Cavill Crosses, and it's meant to be a bookmark, and it's called Hands Off My Book. And this is my contribution to a project that my the guild that I belong to, the chapter, um, it's the Embroiderers Guild of America, and it's the Windy City chapter. I'm in, I'm just outside of Chicago. And, um, they hold their meetings at two libraries. There's a main library where most of those meetings, most of their meetings are at. And then on the months where there are five weeks in the month, they have an extra meeting and that's at another library. They, they change the location. But either way, the, what they want to do is have stitchers stitch on bookmarks and donate them to these libraries. So this is my contribution I'm super close to finishing it. I just need to bring this border. This is like an afternoon. I can finish this in an afternoon. I just need to do it. And then um, this fabric is also one of uh, the Picture This Plus fabrics that I got from Alicia. Let me see if I can put it somewhere where it's not washed out. There we go. Um, what could this be? It's probably like Heartland or Oaken. It's one of those. There's, it's like a very neutrally printed, neutrally toned um, dyed fabric. But I, and I'm doing this in DMC 310. So this is a free pattern by King Cavill Crosses. And uh, you could do it in any color because it's monochromatic or, or multicolors, really. You could make it, um, you know, like a lot. I don't know for my international friends. I don't know how it is with where you're at. But here in the U.S., there are places where... People, ignorant people are fighting to ban books, especially when it comes to, like, black history and queer history. Um, so this could be kind of interesting to, like, maybe stitch um, stitch this in rainbow colors. Um, anyway. So we'll see. I have more fabric. See, it's a kind of a longer piece. I wish I had terrible use of fabric again. If I had moved this up a little bit, then I could have, I probably can still squeeze in. I might try to squeeze in one. But anyway, on this side, I'll do, I could probably fit at least four more. I'm going to try to fit four more in this. And then that will be my contribution to that project for the guild. I have a cone of DMC 310, so I went through a time where I was just looking for a lot of projects to stitch in DMC 310. So this is a real easy one to do. So anyway, um, yeah, that's that. Okay, next one is Namaria Tapestry. And uh, this is by Modern Folk Embroidery. It's a tribute to Lord of the Rings. And the long-distance stitchers, who are Megan and Megan, they started a sal, which is hashtag one stitch to rule them all, uh, to, for stitching on this. So this is on... Um, 32 count Galway. It's by Jackson Fabric Arts, and I'm using DMC 452. And this is what it looks like. Now you'll notice for those of you who are doing the cell, or if you remember the pattern, I'm 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 truncating it a little bit. There's a whole quote, so it's this top band and then this middle band, and then there's a whole quote. There's a um, it's a Galadriel's lament goes in the middle. 
I'm taking the quote out. I'm only stitching the bands with the animals in them. So this bottom one has swans, I think. And this middle band has some kind of like a serpenty sort of thing that I'm not really sure about. And then there are horses up top. So that's it. I'm leaving the quote out. This um, bit up here is a little bit discolored because I started this project in a different color of DMC and it, then I changed my mind and made it a like a lighter tone so that it stands out a little bit brighter. It's meant to look sort of silvery. Uh, silver on green kind of thing. So we'll see. That's kind of a... I feel like those are colors that are associated with um, the elves in uh, that series, in that Lord of the Rings series. So anyway. So this stitches up fast. It's a 32 count fabric. This is a uh, hemp fabric by Jackson Fabric Arts. And it um, it's very soft. It's really, really thick. It feels great. I love stitching on it. So uh, I made it all the way around. I think I got the border done this month. I came all the way around to the border and then I worked into that bottom section a bit. And I think I did like this bit up here this month too. <clears throat> So I'll definitely keep that going. I can't remember if it was this month or last month. There was a Zoom, the, the Megans are holding Zooms if you want to have a little bit of social contact with folks while stitching on that pattern. And I joined on, in on one of them and it was really nice. I, it was a day when I was really, really tired, but it's okay. There, there, it's very low pressure, relaxed. I just kind of sat and stitched and other people were chatting about stuff and, and it was fine. <laughs> it was really nice. So... Um, I hope to join in again. I think they're doing, I feel like I got an email recently for one, or maybe I missed it, but I'll look out for another one and join in again. That was, that was, it's just fun to be online with, with folks, even if you're not necessarily doing all the chatting. <laughs> it's nice to just be around people. You know, like that, I feel like I've, I don't know how true this is, but I feel like I've seen posts on social media about these, um, did I already mention this before? I can't tell what, sometimes I can't remember what stories I've told you before and what I haven't told you, but you know, they have those camp or they, they're these camps advertised where it's like a weekend getaway where you're in a cabin with a whole bunch of people and you all chat for a little bit, but then everybody brings their books that they want to read. And then you just spend the rest of, rest of the night reading. So you're like in company, but <laughs> not having to like socialize the whole time. I feel like Stitcher, we're kind of like that too. Like we just like being around other Stitchers, even if we're not necessarily talking about things. I like to talk about things too, but. Okay. Moving on. So um, last week, was it last week? Yeah, it was winter solstice. So of course I had to work on Sepide by uh, Miriam. Um, Marumi Crafts, and this is a restart, and it's because I'm sort of ena enabled a little bit by, um, she's not a floss tuber, but she's a YouTuber, uh, Daki, who's the wool in the forest, is her channel. I can't recommend her enough. She's, um, I don't listen to her often, but she's sort of like a very special treat. So like, um, first day of vacation, I thought, or no, this was before because I stitched on solstice. So it must have been last week, the week before vacation when like the light at the end of the tunnel was there. I put on one of her videos, Wool in the Forest is her channel. And um, she just talks about all sorts of things. She's um, she advocates for being in the present. So talking about what's going on now, when you when you stitch, how do you appreciate the experience of stitching and how do you feel more in the moment? So how conscious of you of like how the fabric feels or she's a knitter, she's not a cross stitcher, she's a knitter. So like, how do the needles feel in your hands? What sounds are you hearing? How does your body feel? And I love all of that. She's, um, yeah, that's kind of her whole tone is like that. So she's always talking about um, you know, how to use natural products or how to use, how to make use of what's around you. She's, um, a knitter and a dyer. Anyway, so she did a video recently where she was talking about, it was something about how all cultures have like these festivals or traditions when it's cold and dark, they, they find ways to use light. So whether it's fire, candles, <clears throat> strings of lights, glittery or sparkly ornaments, 
There are all sorts of ways that cultures are like seek out light in the darkness. And I, that really spoke to me, and it made me think of Sepide. It was just a few days before um, winter solstice. She was ta- That's what she was talking about. She was, Ducky was talking about midwinter and the feelings that come with midwinter and how to find light amongst darkness. And um, so I was thinking, well, winter solstice, I'm definitely going to stitch on Sepide, but I was looking at my old start, and it didn't really have that f- sense of brightness or shine or the like healing light of the sun, you know? So I grabbed this. I have no idea what this fabric is. It's it's maybe a color in cotton. I don't know. I've been really bad about organizing my fabrics. It's either a color in cotton or a bestitch me maybe because those are what ones I've been stitching on the most recently. It's not a picture of this plus. Color and Cotton or Bestitch Me, I think. But anyway, this is DMC 3829, which is the closest DMC, like regular DMC color to looking like gold. And I just thought this captures like a more bright tone. I I didn't want to stitch with metallics. I know a lot of people are stitching this pattern on metallics to have literal shine on it, but I just knew I wouldn't get through it very quickly. And I didn't, and I didn't, I don't have metallics in stash. I've been trying to stitch from stash. So, um, I went with DMC 3829 and I'm really, really happy with it. I think it's beautiful and it's bright and it makes me feel warm when I look at it. So this is a total restart this month. So I've gotten really far. It stitches up fast because it's on Ada. I just work through things faster on Ada, um, than on linen. So I'm using two strands. Coverage looks pretty good. And, uh, yeah, that's what this is. So I wrote down some things because I had forgotten exactly what, um, like, the meanings behind Sapide. So here's what uh, Miriam says in her, just in the description of, of her pattern. This is from the description on Etsy. So you can buy this in Miriam's Etsy store. And uh, it's called Sapide. And I'll, I'll spell it down below in case you need the spelling. Uh, but here's what she says. Um... So Sepide is a girl's name, and it means the break of dawn, um, twilight, like the arrival of twilight, and it's the first light in the sky before sunrise. So it's the light that you look towards when you've had the longest night of the year and you're looking for that light to come out. And um, this is a quote from Miriam's description. No matter how cold and dark the night, the sun will rise again. So I'm real happy with this, and I want to try to keep going. I think I'll make this kind of a winter stitch and see if I can't finish finish this off. I got so far in just a couple weeks of stitching, so I think I can do a lot more with it. There are little bits of... It's kind of a nice balance, this pattern, between fill-in stitching and outline stitching. So for example, her hair is going to have a couple more sections like this that are just outlined, like the waves in her hair. Um, but then here in her skirt, like these are all, these bands here are filled in, like these pomegranates are filled in. So there's a, there are bits where it'll take a little bit more stitching, but then there are bits that are really just outlines too. Okay, so that again is Sepide by uh, Miriam, by Marumi Crafts. And I think, can we just say, you know, I, I feel like Sarah and Miriam and Julie and I have talked about how we get overwhelmed when Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery puts out pattern after pattern because we all stitch on his patterns. And Miriam, I feel like you need to be less of a Jacob. Because <gasps> Miriam has two patterns. What are they? Um, Miriam has put out two patterns recently and I know more are coming up and I can't keep up with them. D, um, the tribute to D, D- Defiant. That came out recently. And then what's the other? Oh, the band sampler. The, the Yalda to Noru's band sampler, which I haven't even... I haven't even thought about colors or fabric for these yet. I haven't started them. So I will finish Sippy Day and then I'll start on one of those. But, I mean, Miriam, come, like, be less of a Jacob for five minutes, okay? So that we can catch up on what you're doing. <laughs> I know you won't because you sit till, like, two in the morning and design stuff. But it's hard to keep up. Okay, um... Oh, and so Wool in the Forest, give her a listen. Ducky, give her a listen. She's a delight. Just, like, make a nice cup of hot cocoa and put some cinnamon in there and just, like, 
cozy, put on a cozy sweater, and um, she's wonderful to listen to. Okay, um, next one is a blast from the past because I had not worked on this in 2023 and maybe not. In t no, I think I did in 2022, but I hadn't taken this out at all. So you may have noticed on Miriam's channel last week, I think, um, a new video, which the title of it is, here keeps popping up, the title of it is The Quad City Needle Minders, which is what Sarah and Miriam and Julie and I could, like un uninformally call ourselves. Um, because we met, the first time we all got to meet in person was in a region uh, between Illinois and Iowa called the Quad Cities. So we kind of call ourselves the Quad City Needle Minders. So we did a video, we recorded, we tried, back up. We meet once a month via Zoom. We've been trying to for the past few months just to check in with each other and to stitch and have like a more quiet morning of stitching with each other. And um, we decided to record one of our conversations. It was very minimally planned. We basically just had a topic in mind. We said, hey guys, the next time we Zoom, everybody bring one of your lemons, a project that you think is a dud, it's going nowhere, you don't feel excited to stitch on it anymore, but you have like this glimmer of hope that you want to keep it going, and then come and we'll all give suggestions on how to improve it. So that video is up there. You can check on Miriam's channel. I'll see if I can link it below. I'll link it below. And um, so we each brought a lemon and this was my lemon, and I got great advice on it, and I've been stitching on it. So, this is Squirrels of Sumatra. It's by Ink Circles, and it's on a 18 count Mystic by Picture This Plus. And I'm using Sulky. It's 4044, which is butterscotch. It's a yellow and gold variegated floss. And uh, the advice that I had gotten on this, I had been avoiding it because there's a whole mess of mistakes down here. Everything is miscounted. So it's not going to show up evenly the way it does in the, um, in the picture. So like all this will be a little bit off. So it's not going to have the symmetry that it has in the picture. So I've been kind of avoiding it. I, I, I knew I had to reach a point where either I took out all those stitches or just let it go. And and normally I'm fine with letting things go. I don't know why this one bothered me so much, but I never really wanted to pick it up and get to, like make those decisions, I think. So the group made them for me. So basically they said, you know, take all of the unfinished motifs, of which I still have some. So like, for example, this unfinished motif right here. And they said, finish them out. Just go ahead and finish out what's there. Don't add anything new but finish out the motifs that are there and then look at the space that's available. And if you want to add, if there exists any other remaining motifs that fit, put them in. Otherwise, just leave gaps. Leave gaps and be okay with the, with the unevenness because it still looks pretty good. So that's what I did. I've been finishing motifs. So I finished this one. The squirrels are done. I finished this one here. I finished this motif. Uh, this, I think, has a little something up here, but basically the rest of this is done. I finished this one, this one, I finished this one, and that's it, I think. So they had all been started and left undone, and I just went ahead and finished them. And I think it looks pretty, pretty amazing, actually. So I have a lot more motivation to get this. I think I can call this a 2024 finish. I'm going to keep working at it. You know, Sulky stitches up. Did I bring it? Yeah. This is the spool of Sulky I'm using. It's, um, everything's going to be kind of washed out, but it's a golden yellow. And uh, it's got like a tinge of brown in it. It's gold, yellow, and brown are the colors. It's really pretty. Selky variegated threads are really easy to stitch in. It's very carefree stitching because you don't really, the color changes are very quick. So you don't have to pay too much attention about, you know, evening out colors and motifs. The color changes are quick, quick. And it adds some kind of interesting texture. Like I'm looking at it now, look at the squirrel right here. Doesn't, don't the color changes here kind of fit the natural contours of its body? That's sort of interesting, I think. Anyway, 
Sulky stitches up really fast on 18 count Ada. So um, you can just zip through. I, I, I stitch much, much quicker with Sulky than I do with DMC. With DMC, I tend to use two strands. So I find myself stopping on every single stitch, like evening out, flattening out the threads, which you don't have to do with Sulky. So it just works up quicker. So I will keep going with this. Thank you, Quad City Needle Minders, for your advice. And, um, yeah, I will make progress on this. And I want to finish this in 2024. We, when we left our, um, recorded conversation, our video from, that we recorded together, we all agreed that we would try to record our conversations like that once a quarter. So once every three months, you'll see another one. And then we'll take turns hosting it. So next time, uh, I'm happy to do it. We haven't talked about who's going to do it, but I'm happy to do that. And we'll try to give an update on our lemons at that time and then choose a different topic to discuss for that one too. So I think, I think that's kind of what we're leaning towards is each of those quarterly videos will each bring a project to talk about on a theme and then just kind of give each other feedback on it. So, um, that's, so we, I think in that video we left out, um, we put the question out to you, like, do you have a project like that? I think we all have projects like that where we just dread going to them and we have to make the decision about how to proceed or how, you know, do you just let it go? So anyway, that was a good chat, I think. And I'm looking forward to future chats with that group too. Okay. Um, let me pause here. I have a few more whips to show you and then we're Actually, we're getting in, we're kind of getting into new starts here. So let me get a couple things sorted out. I'll be right back. Okay, so I started all sorts this month. I think it's like the frenzy. It's the usual. I have a frenzy at the end of the year. If I'm going to not buy anything or not start anything in 2024, which is not real, I am going to start a lot of things in 20, 2024, then maybe you have this like mad rush to, Julie calls it start-itis. <laughs> She'll message the group and be like, I have a case of start-itis, what should I start? So that definitely hit me this month too. Okay, first piece I'll show you is, this is a sal, it's the Bake Me a Quaker sal, and it's on this One Dozen Quakers by Rosewood Manor. And, um, there we go. And uh, this is with EJ, Sunshine Stitchers, and a whole bunch of people are joining in on this. And the idea is that it's, it's called One Dozen Quakers, but really it's One Dozen Quakers and then some, like a baker's dozen. So we're calling it Bake Me a Quaker Sal. And it's really interesting to see the color combinations that everyone is using. Um, I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm stitching mine on a tote bag. I have this... Um, here we go. Yellow tote bag. And uh, it's stitchable. I can see the fibers in it, so I'm stitching on it. I'm using DMC 3807, which is a purpley gray. It's, it's very purple, but in when you hold it in the dark, it kind of looks gray with a purple tinge, but it's purple. And I like it. I like the contrast, the like two bright kind of colors. And um, this project is really hard to stop stitching on. So uh, EJ has it divided out so you can follow what EJ is doing. Um, she's divided it into 13 sections. So it's the 12 months of 2024 plus this month. So we get a baker's dozen of months as well. And um, I'm a center starter. I tend to be. So I that's what I did. I started in the center and I'm moving my way down. And I think folks who are following EJ's pattern, it might start, it starts on one side or the other. I can't remember which one. I think that's right. So I just kept working down on it and it was really fun to keep going. So uh, let me show you where, so like this motif here is this motif here. Let me hold, see if I can hold up both. So see that? So I'm not that far from the bottom really. Um, and I started on this, so like I started in the middle here, like on this square, and then I'm working my way down like that. So it's good fun to stitch on. I need to get, I'm almost done with um, one skein. One skein works up really fast uh, on a monochromatic project. So I need to get a little bit more 
and then I'll keep going with that. This, the goal is to stitch a little bit each month, a section each month, so that by December of next year you have a finished pattern. It's totally doable. It's very easy, quick and easy pattern. Um, yeah, that's it on this one. Oh, excuse me. I got a few more of those tote bags, so I have other plans to stitch on things. They're all really bright colors. Like, there's a bright pink one, a green one. I got them at, at Michael's. Um, they're, like, when you're checking out, <laughs> there's are bins of different things. So they were just folded up and had a tag on them and had, had um, <clears throat> different colors there. So. so that's that. Okay, next one, next new start was an impulse start, totally enabled by Julie. Julie is stitching on this as well. <clears throat> Julie does some really beautiful, tiny stitching and has some nice um, color combination picks. So definitely check out what Julie's doing with hers. Julie probably probably do a floss tube soon, I hope, with an update. Uh, this is the Weaver's band sampler and it's the birds version so this is by magical it's a blog magical 525 i think everyone has seen the weavers sampler but uh, including me but i had never seen the birds version and that's what julie caught got got that on my radar and so i spent a lot of time this month stitching on this so this is on uh, there we go that's a truer color uh it's a 20 count mango by color and cotton and it's using sulky let me tell you 1090 sulky 1096 which is dark turquoise let me hold it up again and show you there we go and uh I am changing this as well a little bit. There are four bands in the sampler. I'm stitching only three. I picked three of my favorites. One band has peacocks on it, and I'm not always driven to stitch on peacocks. I know they're a favorite motif for a lot of people. They're they're really beautiful, and the color combos are beautiful, but I'm just never motivated to do that. I think it's like all the stitching that goes with the feathers, maybe. <laughs> um, but anyway, I liked these other bands. And uh, so that's what I'll be stitching on, those three. So I had to adjust the border a little bit uh, to come around because it didn't line up. You know, I, you have a f one fewer band, so you have to realign the border a little bit, but it's no biggie. It's a really easy, I don't know if you see that border, it's a very easy border to stitch. It's basically these, these motifs right here repeated. So it makes it easy. So once again, Sulky, it just stitches up really fast. So I was able to work through this pretty quick. This one too, I want to see if I can finish in 2024. I think it's possible. So yeah, Weaver, Weaver's Birds. And it's again, who did I say? Magical 525 is the blog. I'll put a link to it below. They have two free, it's a free, this is a freebie. Free, um... They have two free band samplers, and I think every, like, the one I had known about, I can't remember who stitched on it and finished it, though. There's a, ver a Weaver's Tapestry free band sampler that's, like, four-legged creatures, so, like, deer and goats, I want to say. <laughs> Dragon, there are dragons in that one. Um, and then there's this birds version, too. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's kind of, it's, I'm not getting the perfect light on this. It's a very, it's a, like a bright yellowy orange, this fabric. It's hard to see. It gets a little washed out. Okay. Um, what else? Well, I have this next project. So I started a project but I don't think I'm going to show it yet, but I'll tell you it. I don't know if I'll ever show it but I'll tell you about it. Okay, so a couple things, couple interesting um, things this month, just side, like little side stories. So one is that I was talking with a student of mine. We talk travel all the time. I'm a French teacher. I'm a foreign language teacher, so we talk travel all the time. And um, I've traveled a lot. I've had the opportunity to go to a lot of different places in the world. And in my classroom, 
Uh, I have a lot of stuff, like pictures of everything, like pictures of places to travel all over. Um, but on one wall, I have pictures of me from all the different countries I've been to. And then on the other side of the same display is pictures of students and countries where they've been to. And it's a really good conversation starter. I have it kind of right by my, it's between like my desk and the door. So kids are always looking at it and asking questions about travel and I love it. And um, one of my students the other day saw me, there's a picture of me from when we went to St. Petersburg. And uh, so he was, he, his family is Russian and wonderful, fantastic kid. And uh, he said, oh, you've been to St. Petersburg. What was it like? And we talked about it for a little bit and things I remembered about it. And I said, do you think you'll get a chance to go? Or what, how's that situ? you know, how's that situation? He's like, oh, no, I won't be going because the minute I show up, I'll get conscripted into the military. <laughs> Which is just devastating to think about that there are, like, wonderful young people like him who are forced to do these things in these like authoritarian governments, you know, I thought about that a lot and how like heartbreaking, how heartbreaking it must be to have that kind of relationship where you're culturally connected to a place, but also despise everything that the government is doing and fear it too. It's scary. And um, not too long after that, I think it was maybe a week or so after that conversation, I caught myself watching Cross Stitch the Globe which is Stephanie on Floss Tube. I think um, she also records with her sister, Allison. It's a great Floss Tube channel. I can't believe I haven't been watching it all this time. I'm sure it's been recommended, and I, I'm way behind on all Floss Tubes. But um, she's a really fascinating person. She, tr she also has traveled a lot and um, is a photographer and is, I think now, she's setting up an Etsy shop where she's turning her photographs into cross-stitch patterns, like full-coverage cross-stitch patterns. And she talked about Russia a little bit because she stitches on owl forest patterns. And she had um, talked a little bit about how, um, you know, the concept of, like, not judging the people based on the actions of their government, that whole conversation. And I don't know, I've just been thinking a lot. That sent me down a rabbit hole, by the way, <laughs> because it's been a long time since I've stitched for Ukraine that's a conflict that's been going on. And uh, it's also been a long time since I, I've been reading about what is it like to be a peace activist, a Russian peace activist, when, you're, when you have a government that's, like, squashing every effort at peace, right? And so I read a lot. I'll link an article below. It's like an interview below that I found really fascinating and very insightful. It's by, hang on. Peace Pledge Union, they're an organization out of the UK, and they did an interview with a young Russian activist, and it's very um, informative, and it looks at how is it that a government squashes efforts at, like, protesting, speaking up, and things like that, because it's, it's very scary right now if you're a peace activist in, in Russia. And then it reminded me a lot, reading what, what this young activist had to say about how they, um, you know, um, mandate what's to, mandate the types of information that's shared in schools, they cut off access to information, so, like, journalists, um, me, social, like, media and social media, um, they just make it a very scary place to get informed, you know, and to speak up about things. And then it reminds me of, like, what's going on now in Palestine and how there are, um, you know, Israeli and Jewish activists who are speaking up for peace, and it's scary for them, too. And I just felt, you know how, I think some of you are like me, like, you're, what you read about all these things, and the way that you process this information is by getting informed, but also putting it into stitching. <laughs> so... What I've done is I've taken, I, I haven't stitched on owl forest patterns in a long time. Just haven't thought about it, you know, and, and I, I had, last year I had put my efforts into stitching on patterns by like two by two stitch art by Ukrainian stitchers, Stitchy Princess Black, who continues to give us updates on what's going on in Ukraine. Um, so I have owl forest patterns and stash, but what I'm doing is I'm stitching. So I, I studied a little bit of Russian in college too. Not, I'm barely conversation. I can read it. When we traveled, I was able to like read metro signs and stuff like that and use very basic 
um, interactive phrases, but my conversational Russian needs a lot of work. But I was reading, you know, when I was reading about activists in Russia, that a common phrase on signs at protests is, let me think, niet, niet vojnia, niet vojnia, which is no to war. And that's what you'll see on posters a lot. So I'm stitching, I'm using one of my owl forest patterns, and I'm stitching the phrase niet vojnia, no war, um, in Russian. The only th reason why I'm not showing it yet, and I'm not sure, I, I guess I, give me some advice on this for those of you who are like craftivists and activists or, or, or not and you have an opinion on it. I would be worried that somehow my stitching, like the picture of my stitching would somehow connect back to Owl Forest and create a dangerous situation for them, if that makes sense. Because they don't make any, I think, they don't make any political statements through their stitching, but it might be because they're terrified to. I don't know. Uh, we're not. Maybe they support what's going on. I mean, this this interview with the with the Russian activist, it talked about how there's a lot of falsified information. So, like, the government will say, well, 70% of Russians support the war, but in, in reality, it's just, like, a nation full of terrified people who don't support it but are afraid to speak up. So you don't really get a true sense of how people feel. Um, about what's going on. So I just wouldn't, that's where, that's where my mindset, I think, I think and overthink about a lot of things, but that's where my mindset is. I would hate to have some, some kind of crackdown on them somehow linking back to, you know, anti-war efforts through their patterns or, you know what I mean? So anyway, if you would like to see it, what I'm working on, let me know. Just message me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram below, and I can send you a picture, like, from my stitchy friends. I know you'll want to see it, but I don't think I'll show it. I won't post it on Instagram, and I won't show it here, just in case those connections are drawn and it somehow hurts them. If that makes sense. Okay. Next up, Julie, um, in one of... Our Julie, Miriam, and I, in one of our bouts of starditis, we decided to stitch on a pattern by Sarah Modcross. Let me get it sorted out here. So I'll show you the picture first. So this is from the Christmas ornaments, um, cross stitch, just cross stitch Christmas ornaments. Sarah did this little friend, this little Rudolph, dressed as a pilot. And uh, so we're all stitching on that now. I mean, I think Julie and Miriam finished theirs. I, of course, made it overcomplicated for myself, but I like how it's turning out. So, so tiny. I'm doing it tiny stitching. So this is a 40 count Zweigart. It's like Cafe au lait or something like that. Let's see if I can I get it any closer. There we go. And I'm stitching it one over one on 40 count. But I do love how it's turning out. I think it's really pretty. You can see his ear antlers, and then we're getting his um, flyboy glasses. Goggles. So, um, it'll be really tiny. It'll be like a 3x3, three three, I think, in the end is what it comes out to. It'll be even smaller than that, maybe. And um, I'm using the leftover 100.3 Overeswa silks that I had from finishing uh, Where Flowers Bloom. I don't know if you remember that project. I'll try to put a picture of it here if I have one. And um, so that, the called for silks on that were Overa Swa 103s. So now I have these spare 103 silks and I'm thinking of what to do with them. So I'm trying, I'm experimenting a bit with tiny stitching with those. So these are not the called for colors or even, um, no, I don't know what I'm saying. They're not the called for colors, but I just use whatever colors I have from that stash and put them in. And for the most part, I have matching colors. I know his Rudolph's actual body will be more orangey toned <laughs> because I don't have brown colors. I only have orange, like these kind of terracotta and peachy tones. But I think it'll be fine. It'll it'll still look like him. This um, stitching the goggles has been a bit of a challenge. I'm getting a taste of what it's like to park my threads the way that full coverage stitchers do because there are a lot of color changes there. It's layers and layers. I don't know if you're seeing it clearly, but like 
there's white and black for the eye, then there's brown for his body, like the skin around his eye, then there are two layers of gray. So each of those, because, what am I trying to say? The 103 silk is a little too thick for stitching one-on-one -on, -one on 40 count. So it gets really bunched up and tight, which is okay if, like if you're putting in a stitch and everything around it is open and unstitched, it's really easy. Like if there's only a stitch on one side or in one corner, it's really easy because the rest of those threads give you a little give. But if you have stitches on like two or three sides and you're filling in that one, it gets very crowded and it's hard to do color changes. So I'm doing those color changes almost in layers and making sure that every time I add a new layer, there's still open stitches on the outside so that I can get a little bit of give on that side. So that's what's happening. So uh, I should be able to finish this pretty soon. Um, I just have to work through. When I work, after working through those goggles, the rest will be really easy. It's like the rest of his mouth and that's all. It'll just be like rows and rows of the same color. And then he has a scarf I think he's wearing on the bottom. Let's look at the picture. Yeah. See, like most of this will be the same color. There's a little bit of outline in a different color. I have to bring his helmet um, flaps down, and then this scarf. So, I'm happy to support Sarah. Sarah's just had a, a, a wonderful designer year, so we're all so proud of her and happy for her and hope that 2024 brings more stitchy time for her, too. Stitching and designing time. Okay, next up is what? <laughs> well, I put in some test stitches of the new Modern Folk Embroidery 2024 cell. And uh, I had a, like, very quickly picked out a fabric and floss for it, and I tried stitching it with one strand. Didn't like it, so I'm then I tried, tr tried two strands, and it's working great. So this is all I have of it so far. <laughs> but this is my test. I wanted to make sure I, I would be happy with it, and I'm I'm loving it. Look at it. So this fabric is Be Stitch Me. It's a 20 count Ada and it's called Hot Cocoa. And it's one of my favorite neutrals. It's actually the same fabric that I'm using for the Palestinian piece too. That will be, um, I'm gonna see if I can use up the whole piece of fabric. It's a fat quarter, I think. I'm gonna see if I can use up the whole piece of fabric. Actually, or the other idea I had, sorry, go backtracking this Palestinian piece from the beginning. One of my ideas for this, what do you think of this? It's upside down. So this right here is the bottom of uh, the Deco Elian pattern. And so the Lena's Thobe pattern, I wasn't going to stitch the whole pattern. I was just gonna stitch it so that it evens out what, whatever fills in this part to even out with the bottom. And then I want to see if I can get someone, any uh, looking for volunteers, if anyone's interested, I wanted to see if I can get someone to turn this into a project bag and then give it to like Deco Elian or Lena Thob, any of the Palestinian stitchers to use as like a giveaway item for when they do their cultural stitching circle. So they, I think, I'm pretty sure there are a number of Palestinian stitchers who gather together and hold these like cultural circles for people of Palestinian origin who want to reconnect with their culture through stitching. And um, it kind of reminds, like it made me think that, you know, I have a lot of students and colleagues who are Palestinian. And one colleague told me once, we were talking about Tetris, and this colleague told me once, oh yeah, we don't have, my family doesn't have any of their Tetris anymore because it was all just, a lot of their belongings were lost in a house fire back in Palestine. And it just made me think with like all the destruction that's going on right now too, like how many family heirlooms are lost maybe. And those like small pieces of, um, you know, those small treasures that you have from your family, those, those, those handmade items that we, we, you know, can very easily pass on from one family member to the other and not think about it, how much of that is lost. So that's an idea for that pattern. Why did I bring it up? Oh, because it's on hot cocoa. <laughs> It's on Hot Cocoa by Bee Stitch Me, and so is my um, 
2024 sale. So I, I think it's great. I'm, I'll keep up with this. I've, um, yeah, I think I'm going to keep up with it. It's, what is it? Silks for You PR 065. And I think I'm going to stitch on this um, New Year's Eve. This will be my New Year's Eve stitch going into New Year's Day also. It's kind of, there we go. That's a truer color, I think. It's got, see how it's got like a little bit of almost grayish modeling? It's got a layer of that kind of taupey grayish modeling into like a light wash, almost like a coffee dye look to it. This needle minder is from Abby Top Knot Stitcher. There are a couple squirrels in this pattern. <laughs> I think that's what, I can't remember now, but you're gonna know there's someone who has finished this pattern, right? The 2024 cell, they've already finished it and they posted on Instagram. And I was following the hashtag, it's hashtag MFE2024 cell. And I was looking at just everybody's color combos and everything. And this person who had finished it, I think they're the one who said, somebody said, I saw the squirrels in the pattern and I had to run and start it right away. <laughs> so, um, makes me think of squirrels. So, um... I was watching the latest floss tube from Jerica, who is a fellow early bird stitcher. She's Daybreak Stitcher, Daybreak underscore Stitcher on Instagram and on floss tube. She's got a great floss tube. She and she's like a very um whatever the stitchy version of prolific is, that's what she is. She stitches all the time. She's producing like finished products all the time. She's a quick stitcher. And she mentioned a couple cool ideas for I guess we're kinda of, we're kind of moving into plans here. Um, for 2024, she wants to start the Fruits of Plenty sale. And so I told her, oh, well, let me know when you stitch on it and I'll try to work on my 2024 sale, which then I just took out here to show you. It's been a little while since you've seen it. So here's mine. Here's what I have so far. So I'm not that far into it yet, but I love, I love it. It's a Cosmo Purple. I want to say it's 2030, but double check that. It's a dark, like a deep, deep, um, muted kind of pruney purple, and I love it. And it's on, uh, this is Heather by Fiber on a Whim, I think. And, uh, yeah, so I may see, I may do more of this. If Jerrica's stitching on it, I may join her. She's got a beautiful color combo on her. It's like this warm kind of, uh, clay, terracotta clay fabric. I think it's an XJU design. And then she's chosen this like silvery gray floss to put on it. It'll be very pretty, very pretty um, pattern. So I'll get these MFE cells. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll even finish one of these this year. Wouldn't that be exciting? I'd like to try even the new, the, um, the new one, I think because it's a 10 parter, it's not a 12 monther. It's got 10 parts to it. It might actually be doable to even get like half of it in a year. Okay, we're fully going into plans here. So the plan is to keep going with the existing cells, which are, um, which just started. So the Bake Me a Quaker cell, the, um, what's the, of uh, MFE cell 2024. And then Anita, who is the Violet Stitcher, is will be starting a sale. I don't remember what the hashtag is for it, but 2024 is the year of the dragon and uh, in Asian Asian cultures. And um, so she's stitch. She already is like the ultimate dragon stitcher. If you watch her channel, she does these enormous full coverage, like beautiful full coverage dragon pieces, all kinds of. She's got. Like, every dragon stitch that's out there, she probably knows about. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to join her in stitching dragons. I enjoy stitching dragons as well. And I'm going to use this as a cute up. <laughs> I'm going to make myself, before I stitch on any new dragons, I want to stitch on three of my existing dragons. Okay, so one of them is... I think it goes this way. Um, Sky Dragon... <laughs> Uh, which is by Ann Stokes. And this is in that same January 2023 World of Cross Stitching magazine. And this is on Be Stitch Me, but I, I don't remember what the fabric is called. But I'll look it up. It's in my records somewhere. And uh, it's, this is kind of like, um, you know, Sarah's 
marigold pattern and she's got a pansy pattern as well. They're sort of like mini full coverage pieces. So you're, there's one big motif and that motif is full coverage. That's what Sky Dragon is like. So there's one dragon motif and that motif is filled in all the way. The dragon is full covered stitching, but it's not like you're stitching a huge, you're not stitching any backgrounds or anything like that. So I feel like these are manageable full coverage pieces. And so I want to finish this. This is one of the pieces I want to finish before I can tackle any new dragons. The other one is uh, not a finish, but I want to put a page finish into um, Mermaid's Folly. And I'm doing a, a short version of this. Let me think of which one I'm doing. I'm doing Mermaid and Dragon, I think. And I'm not seeing it on here. Well, here's where here's where my confusion is. I thought I was doing this. So this pattern, it comes as an enormous packet of papers because it's charted out in four different ways. So it's the full one, actually five different ways, because it's the full mermaid, dragon, and old man, or you can do these different versions. So you could do just the old man, old man and mermaid, mermaid and dragon, or just dragon. So I think I'm doing this one, mermaid and dragon. And I'm questioning it because... I'm looking at what her hands look like here. What is it? It's her hand and then like this branch up here. But that's not what my pattern looks like, what I've stitched so far. Very large piece of fabric, so it gets a little unwieldy. So I don't know what I've stitched here. Let me hold this up again and see. Is that her hand? Oh no, the trap. What is it? I don't know. I don't entirely know what I've stitched so far. It doesn't resemble any. Is it her hand? Well, that'll be a mystery when I go back to that one. I don't know what I've started on this, but I, I think that's what I'm doing. I think I'm doing the mermaid and dragon part of it. This is, uh, fabric by Jessie at Mislaid Pages. It's called Bayou. And I just thought with a mermaid theme, it's kind of a nice blue, um, be nice fabric. And this is DMC 3808. I have like a half cone of that. So I'll use that. So anyway, back to it. I want to get a page finish done on this. Uh, that's another part of my queued up sell. I have to finish Sky Dragon, a page finish on this. And then I don't have it with me. I couldn't find it but I'll put a picture up. The Linens and Threads, which is now Fox and Rabbit, one of the free cells, maybe from 2017 or 2018, is a ba medieval band sampler. And one of the bands in it is Dragons. And I've started that one. And I, my plan was, again, not to stitch all the bands, but just to stitch the Dragon one. And then maybe a couple, there are a couple of thinner bands that have like flowers, I think. Maybe do a couple of those. So that, so all of these, all three of these, I have to finish those goals first before I can start on any other dragons. But would you like to see what dragons I have lined up? Should we talk about that? This is a little bit, it's not quite kitted up parade, but I can show you some ideas for patterns. Okay, so one is uh, Water Dragon. <laughs> This is by Ingleside Imaginarium, and I've never stitched on a pattern of theirs before, but I'm pretty excited. Look at all the... Um, colors in there. I feel like it's, this could be very doable. This is again like a mini full coverage, right? But you can kind of see, it doesn't look like there are too many color changes, like in the wings here and in the tail. So this could be very achievable. I've already picked out a fabric for it. Steve helped me pick out a, pick out a fabric this summer. Um, and this is Devil's Claw by V Stitch Me. So I have a dreamy fabric just waiting for it. This is the pattern. And that's the fabric. So I need to finish my other projects first before I can start on that one. But that's, it's not kitted up. All I have is a fabric, but it's, it's all DMC. There are some beads in it, which I've never beaded anything before, but it looks like, like along his back here, there are some beads. So we will 
get to that when we get to it. <laughs> and then I have a couple more um, ideas for dragon stitching for when I finish everything else. I have two of these. These are by Firewing Designs. And so this one is Warrior and um, Paladin. And they're monochromatic stitches for which I think I want to try uh, some tiny stitching on this to make it small. The, the pattern right now, it says on a 14 count fabric, it's a 13 inches by 5 inches. So I want to do it one over one on like a 36 count with one of my, um, one of those uh, 103 Overa swaths that I have. The, I think the, the, all the tiny stitchers, you can correct me, but I think it's Swaz Your Fin. Swaz Your Fin is the one that's ideal. It's thinner than 103. It's also Overa swab, but it's thinner. And I think that's the one that the folks are using for tiny stitching, but I don't have that. I'm using what I have from Stash, so... I will just change, since it's so tight on 40 count fabric, I'll change to like a 36 count and see if it holds up any better. So anyway, those are ideas for these two. And then uh, I have this one by Draco Lair Creations, Ouroboros. And it's a dragon as well. It's kind of, isn't it, it's unusual looking, right? So I thought it could be kind of interesting on maybe like a contrasting color fabric. To think about that. Um, this was a pattern that I got from Abby Bella Stitch. She was, she's was she been de-stashing items. So when I saw the dragon, I thought, well, let me just hang on to this, and it's so unusual. I'm not sure I would stitch the... It's got a border stitched on it, but I think I would just do the dragon motif on it. It's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's 12... Cut, no. It's more than 12. It's 14 or 15 colors in it. So it, it's a lot more than it looks like. Anyway, something to think about. And then I'll show you, um, I'll have to put in pictures for the rest of these, but I have other plans for dragon stitches too. Um, Miriam has fluffed the dragon. That will be really fun to stitch on. And I think, you know, Miriam, a lot of her model stitches, she uses Jessie. Uh, mislaid pages, um, Jesse's fabric, and I know I have some of their fabric somewhere. I have to. I have some small pieces of Jesse's fabric that um, that they dyed. I think for one of the bird boxes. Burp, yeah, bird box. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll try to stitch fluff on one of those, and then you saw Water Dragon by Ingleside Imaginarium, Firewing Studios. Oh, Needle Lot Designs has a really cute tiny dragon. It's called Dragon Slash Kelpie, and uh, it looks like it could be quick to finish. It's also kind of a small fill-in stitch, but it looks quick enough. And then Flox... I can't say this name. <laughs> Every time I try to say it, I mess it up. Flossy Fox Shop. I always want to say Foxy Floss Shop, like Fox, but that's Roxy Floss. Anyway, Flossy Fox Shop has a dragon bookmark, which looks really cool also. So these are all, if I can get my act together, finish a few items, then I can try to stitch on some of these, and I'll join Anita on that uh, Year of the Dragon sale. It's probably just Year of the Dragon sale, I think, on the hashtag on that. And then I'll throw in a couple just for kicks. I'll throw in some pictures of a few other dragon stitches in case you're curious like me. I've basically been Googling. Ever since Anita brought this up months ago, I've been like looking and looking at dragon patterns. Uh, Patricia Aiken has a really cute autumn dragon pattern. It, there, there's like a tree with autumn leaves. It's got a beautiful leaf border and there's a dragon sleeping along the, the um, foot of the tree. And then Owl Forest has a star dragon pattern. It doesn't look like it's available yet in their, like, international shop. Um, the Floss Box has a very cute dragon ornament, which could make, like, a cute little wintry pillow. And then the Weaver's Band Sampler, which I mentioned before, has a dragon layer in there, too. So, okay. Anything else? Yeah, two other real quick plans. Julie and Miriam both have birthdays in January, so there will be some kind of sales starting up for those, but I'm going to let them talk about those because I don't, I'm not 100% sure what those are going to be. And then uh, I'm joining Julie this year. She's starting a hashtag called Motif a Week. 
So you take a project with a whole bunch of motifs on it that looks like it'll take forever and you tackle one motif a week. And um, so for that one, I'm choosing Etude by Lena Krostich. And you've seen this before. It's just been a year because I was working on this over break last year, this time of year last year. And so this is uh, a project I started after I was enabled by Shiloh, Crossstitch MD, and uh, Ryan, Rai Rai McGuy. Both of them have finished, Shiloh has finished this color version, and Ryan finished a different, there's a um, the same pattern you can get in a different color uh, palette. So he's done that one. And this has been, they finished theirs like years ago. It's been years now since they finished. And um, I'm working mine, I think this is Persimmon by Fiber on a Whim. And uh, I'm using the Called for DMC colors, which is a really nice, it's just a nice arrangement of blues and greens, but then these like little oranges and there's even a coral pink for a pop of color. So this has 80 motifs in it. It's an eight by 10, eight squares by 10 squares. And I finished 16 of them, 16 are done if I can open it up all the way so you can see. There we go. So 16 are done. So this width across the top, like this is it. It's going to be this this width and then this length down the bottom. That's it. So I've gotten across the top and I've gotten, gotten to the bottom. So now it's just filling in the motifs. The motifs are far more complicated than they look. They're all geometric patterns and they have a lot of stitching. I mean, so like something like this you're almost stitching in an entire square. <laughs> it's very little that's not stitched in something like that. Versus like something like this, there's a lot more open space, so that took less time to do something like this too. So each one has um, a little bit different time going with, you know, required to finish it. So like something like this is quick, right? So I think something like this could be good. Julie, your idea is really good because some motifs, like if you're having a very hectic week or a busy week and you don't have a lot of time, I could put in time to a motif that's maybe not as much fill in. And then when, when I have, you know, an entire weekend afternoon or something to stitch, I can tackle a more challenging one. But that means I have 64 motifs left. So there will have to be some weeks where I stitch on two motifs if I want to finish this by 2024. So we will see how it goes on that one. But I, I like the idea. Um, Julie is stitching this on um, using that hashtag with And a Forest Grew by Rosewood Manor. Is it by Rosewood Manor? Yeah. And I think that's a great idea too. It's, it's a pattern that has a whole bunch of different sized trees all over it. So that's, that's a good idea, Julie. I'm going to join you. Uh, I'm missing something big. Oh! Stitch for Pride 2024. I'm I'm all in on that one. I'm, I got the fabric and the flosses. They're both arriving soon. And um, yeah, I'm excited about it. So um, I will definitely join in on that. I've, I signed up for both. I signed up for the learning piece and the stitching piece. I accidentally signed up. What I, I saw Dee's post in a story. <laughs> saying that the the um, Sal was ready in their shop and I didn't even listen to the rest of the post I just paused it and like ran to the um I think it's on D's Ko-Fi and I, I quick added something to the cart and I checked out and then it was only afterwards when I saw the PDF that came with it that it was the learning only because they're they're offering two options for the 2024 Stitch for Pride if you don't want to stitch if you just want to do the learning and the action part you can get a learning only version. And so that's what I had gotten. So I thought, oh no, what did I do? So then I went back in and I just considered that kind of a donation to, to so much that Dee's been doing, you know, educating and pulling resources for us and everything. And I, then I went ahead and bought the correct, the stitching version. And then I, I used, when you buy the stitching version of the Sal, the PDF that you get from that has links to how to buy the fabric, the called for fabric and flosses, which um, the fabric is from Jesse Mislaid Pages, and then the flosses are from Jasmine, Knitting Nurse Jasmine. So um, I'm excited because it's an art-themed sal. I, I can't wait, actually. I really love... I'm, I'm lucky I live in a large 
metropolitan area and we have access to really great art museums. So I feel like, and my, my teachers, my high school teachers gave me a really good introduction to the arts and it's been a part of my life. I really enjoy learning about artists and hearing what they have to say. So I think this would be a great sell. I'm really excited about it. I still need to do my um, final prompt for this year's 2023 sal. So um, I'll do that. That'll probably be my last. I haven't been posting much on Instagram um, because I find it jar. Personally, this is just me, okay? I find it jarring to be reading. Right now I'm reading a lot about Palestine and my focus on social media is on Palestine, but also like decolonization, um, you know, right, human rights in general. Like that tends to be what I'm seeing right now. So I find it personally really jarring when, you know, someone, like I see a post of like someone's cake or something, you know, something that's different. I know it shouldn't be, but it just is to me right now. That's where my head is at right now. And that's how I'm using social media. So, um, I think the 2023 Sal post, the post, I'll make a post for the, whatever I stitch on and learn from that. And I think that will be a good way to finish the year. It, it feels, it just personally feels like my Instagram stitchy page has been dedicated to more craftivism kind of stuff recently. And that's where it'll be for right now. That's where it'll at. That may change at some point when it feels right. When it feels right, I'll post more. And I'm terrible at posting in general anyway. So anyway, we'll finish um, with one last thing I'll show you, which is a crochet project I started. I for, totally, I forgot about this. I was going to wrap it up just now. I forgot about this. I'm stitching a baby blanket for a colleague um, who's due in April. So I have a little bit of time, but it's a basic um, granny square stitch. Here, let me double it up. It's a basic granny square stitch. And then you, um, instead of, usually a granny square is a square. So you're doing rotating rows around to make a square. Um, but in this, you're just stitching it in a row. So it'll be stripey and I'll have some kind of coordinating border to go around it. So I need to put some work into that. This is, um, using Surder Cotton. I think it's a UK brand and I'm using these three. It's like a white, pink, and a orange. This is all from Stash. I needed to do something with these anyway. So, uh, I thought they'd be perfect for baby, baby blanket colors. So. Okay, that's really it. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for um, tuning in and wanting to hear about what I have to say, my rambling, my stitchy ramblings, and my th things I forget to mention, and my messy hair that's been driving me crazy today, and my like very low quality tech setup, and I, I really, really appreciate your being here and um, wanting to talk about things and wanting to hear and wanting to keep conversations going and wanting to talk about hard stuff and wanting to talk about fun stuff. I hope that you're doing okay. And if not, I hope that you're on the path to being okay. And I hope um, you're able to find some stitchy time for yourself. And I hope that 2024 has lots of wonderful things ahead for you too. And um, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you in a month. Happy stitching.